as individuals, we are strong, but as a community, we are powerful. Tell me what you need, and I'll do what I can. Who are we? MSI! Who are we? MSI! Who are we? Hello everyone, this is your host with the most, Alan Ruelas, and welcome to Get Going with MSI. We welcome brother... Uh, my name is Salim Hader. I'm in the MSI 2019 cohort. Yes, and this is episode numero siete, amigos, number seven. And of course, this is where we establish our valuable stories because that's what we do. So, first and foremost, I'd like to check in because that's mental health is super important. And how are you doing, brother Salim? I'm doing good. Um, I recently came back from a study abroad trip that I did in Barcelona with the business honors program, and it was a lot of fun. Got a good chance to relax, so it's good to be back in the United States, back home, friends and family. Uh, today has been a busy day so far, but this is a nice, relaxing way to uh, enter the evening, so I'm very excited to be here. Well, I'd say, you know, personally, I love traveling, so I'm happy for you. That's always a W. How's Bar I mean, Barcelona. Tell yeah. Me a little bit, dissect a little bit. Barcelona is fantastic. Um, I think it's a great place to go with friends. There's yeah. uh, lots of different activities that you can do, whether you enjoy restauranting and walking around or you enjoy going out um, with uh, to the club or to a bar with friends. Uh, whatever you want, you can find it in Barcelona. I also had the chance to visit Madrid for a very short period of time. I took the, the bullet train to travel between cities. Fantastic experience. So. Um, I highly recommend it if you're ever planning on visiting Spain to check out the train transportation system so you can make the most out of your visit. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Let me tell you, let me tell you, we just came back from our little gathering, our gathering, our brotherhood gathering, and I'm smiling cheek to cheek because as you know, those panelists were a 10 out of 10 out of experience for me, asking those questions about being a Chicano, you know mm. what I'm saying, uh, what Mecha represents. Yeah. Tell me, how was that experience for you right now that we just came out just walk us through i mean Salim, what do you think about that yeah it's i really like um the brotherhood gatherings and the way that they're structured because you learn so much from different varieties and backgrounds that's one of the, my favorite things about msi is you really get to learn from people with from all sorts of backgrounds with widely different stories and that's what happened today um with all of our panelists who are in multiple different fields whether it's uh government or law uh, about to take their uh junior's doctorate um, or whether it's in education or business, we had panelists from all sorts of backgrounds. It's interesting, or film even. And mm -hmm. it's super interesting hearing um, the challenges and obstacles that they've faced in their career, their non-traditional paths that they've had in education and beyond. Uh, and frankly, quite inspiring to, to be able to learn from those individuals and what they have. I, I think my favorite part of the panel is at the very end, um, where they talk about those final messages that they want to give, especially as a a graduating student myself this year to be able to hear that uh, gives me a lot of hope and inspiration for the future there's a, there's a lot to look forward to and it seems like um, those people have been through uh, all of our panelists have been through a lot and, and have came out on top so i'm excited to hopefully uh, be on a panel my own someday and be able to speak about some of those experiences oh, i'm surprised you haven't had a panel yet <laughs> <laughs> devoted to Thank you, you and your you know your experiences i mean you're a senior mm. talk to us more about that you know um being within csuf and growing as an individual yeah so um this is my final year on campus and it's been a very non-traditional track as well um mm -hmm. i was born and raised in southern california and uh, I went to Valencia High School, which is maybe a five minute drive from Cal State Fullerton. So the campus has always been very close to me, very close to home. Um, and when I came into Cal State Fullerton, there was a lot of options that I had out in front of me. I was very blessed to have the opportunity to take advanced level classes in high school and receive college credit um, that I could use during my undergraduate here at CSUF. Mm -hmm. So I, I chose to study business. Business is something that uh, I've always found a passion for. In, in high school, I used to sell snacks and concessions out of the duffel bag. And I just love the, the concept of being able to sell a product, market a product, grow and scale. And um, that drew me towards business and specifically in accounting because of the wide variety of options that it provided. So I started on that career track. Um, I brought forward some of my units and credits from uh, high school into my undergraduate and I was able to graduate a year early. And with that came a lot of obstacles for sure. Where yeah. We were thrown into the pandemic my very first year. I had spent about half a semester uh, on campus and um, it, it was tough in the sense of uh, now uh, my three-year education was suddenly uh, a year and a half of it was online. 
So it, now it's a year and a half education when it comes into being on campus, being a senior, having the chance to get that, you know, personal development, especially as it related to wanting to leave the legacy and learn the things that I wanted to learn from the university. So it, it was tough, a, a lot of a lot of different stresses and obstacles. Um, but I, I overcame, I, I pushed a lot forward and uh, I pushed through a lot of it. And I'm really happy with where I am now. I feel like I'm ready for what's next in the next stage. So yeah. um, Alan wanted to talk a little bit more about that. So I'm excited to do that. Well, I will say, and I, 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 I'm obviously very happy to do this every single time that I have the opportunity to. So every interview, every episode, every individual, every topic that we establish becomes oral history. I learned this in my Chicano class. So shout yeah. out to my professor. But how we empower ourselves. You know, sometimes we leave, you know, like, oh, it's cool remembering that person. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, everyone has a story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, second of all, my type of POV behind all this is documentation and archives. It's not necessarily numbers, it's not necessarily views, it's the impact. You, sir, cause tsunamis. And the reason we're here today is because of that. I talked to Jeanette and I was like, you know, what questions should we ask Salim? And we're impressed by your motivation. Talk to us about how you, let's, let's dissect this, have that motivation where you influence other people. Yeah, so I think the, the best way to do that is for, for context, um, some of the different things that I'm involved with. So yes. Um, yes. I, yes. I, I think there's five, five current things that I, I'm very invested in at the moment. Um, First and foremost, let's start with education. Uh, I'm president of the Business Honors Program, um, one of three presidents. It was something I got involved with the leadership team uh, my second year on campus, and this is my third year where uh, I'm now overseeing three of the teams alongside two other presidents, and it's been a fantastic experience, uh, and I've learned a lot. Uh, the second thing as it relates to stuff that I do on campus is my very first year, I started TEDxCSUF, which is... Oh if the God, audience is so cool. familiar with TED Talks, um, that's something that I campaign for a lot. And that's a program that um, I founded from scratch, which was really exciting and a lot of work. Um, but it's come really far. I think we're at 150 members and we have a board of around 15. We do two main conferences every year and we've worked with ASI and we've featured speakers from Cornell and CSUF students and um, people with multiple degrees and doctorates. It's, it's really awesome being able to work on that. Mm -hmm. Um, outside of campus. Now let's start going a little bit beyond. Um, I run a, a nonprofit charity called mm -hmm. Mask Heroes Initiative, which was uh, something that happened in early 2020, where there was a huge shortage of PPE, which is uh, protective equipment for medical. So we're talking masks, face shields, gowns, because um, there was a huge shortage with the pandemic causing a supply chain shortage and everything. Um, so what we did is uh, as a nonprofit comprised solely of students, uh, we fundraise money through social media marketing, through business partnerships, and uh, we brought a lot of uh, equipment from abroad back to the States, and we donated to hospitals, retirement homes, homeless shelters, um, uh, the Red Cross, uh, Salvation Army, so awesome places. And I think right now we're at a total of uh, 120000 or so dollars donated, and we're at um, seven different universities. Um, so that's really awesome. And then... Uh, Two more things, rounding it back to things that are related to my career. Mm -hmm. um, I've done two internships, um, one in the area of consulting, one in the area of accounting, and I accepted a position to work as a strategy consultant for a firm called EY Parthenon in the Boston area for when I graduate. And uh, another job that I currently hold on campus is I work as a peer mentor for the MSI program. So mm -hmm. um, that's where I know you from. <laughs> exactly. So full circle, full circle. <laughs> Um, so I, I, yeah, there's, there's a lot that I do. Um, and, and I have to say that when it comes into finding one, just one thing to identify that, you know, acts as a, a, a motive, motivation, it's hard. Um, but I can't say a, a philosophy that I've, I've sort of thought about for a while now is that when looking at my, my career, my education track, where I chose to get, go to university, what degree I chose, um, what career I chose, I think, uh, a good slogan is in uniqueness lies opportunity. That's something that I've really, really, you know, stuck to um, where even though I may have studied accounting, I chose to explore other fields because I, I saw that there was value in areas that were non-traditional. Um, my education path is non-traditional. My career trajectory is non-traditional. My um, 
way of pursuing higher education, such as master programs, is non-traditional. So, um, so for example, this year I'm applying to five different schools for MBAs uh, several years in advance of what normal applicants would. Mm -hmm. So it, it's always, you know, looking at what's in front of me and then figuring out what's not in front of me. And, and I feel like that's always kept me in this sort of mindset of there's so much more to be discovered. There's something always around the corner. So let's go ahead and take a peek and see if it's worth pursuing. Um, and I, I feel like I've been in that mode, in that mindset for the past couple of years now. And it's taken me um, in. It's just it's never failed to take me in places that I've um, really enjoyed. So that's something that always keeps me excited. I, I never feel I never sink into complacency. Um, and that really helps keep me motivated and keep me pursuing new things. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you. This is the first round that I ever do. Out of seven episodes, I'm going to ask this question. Mm. Brother Salim, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. 20 years old. 20 years old. My goodness. Let me tell you. That is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is impressive. I'll share. I'll disclose my age as of now. Um, I'm 23. Mm. I'm 23 in the sense that we grow. Mm. And for me personally, and now I understand my coach, I feel inspired. And I've said this before, when I see the brothers reaching above and beyond. But you don't necessarily need to reach above and beyond for me to have admiration for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I say that because I tell brothers, first of all, the sun shines for everybody. Let's establish that. The second thing is reaching the fullness of our potential. My goodness, sometimes, quote unquote, imposter syndrome, whether it be because of the institution, whether it be because of home, whether it be because of peers, whether it be whatever the case is. No, <laughs> we uphold these values and I encourage people to keep pushing. And one of the people who does this is you. But you as an individual, let me say, let me say, what would you leave for our next generation? Our younger brothers, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, even seniors who are maybe doubting themselves or have moments where they're like, oh my gosh, mm, I am not going to do it because maybe what if, what other people say? What would you tell to them? So, and this is something that I, I've thought about as, lot, as well in my own personal life, where when going back to what I said earlier, when you're constantly looking for something, you're constantly in an environment of uncertainty. Yeah. Where it's, it's, it's nice, it's comfortable to be sitting with what you're familiar with, to be doing what you've been doing. Um, but when I, what I just said was not that, it was the polar opposite. It's to always look for something new. And that comes with its whole set of mental challenges and, and difficulties and obstacles. And the thing that I would say um, is to reach out, reach out to people. That's honestly what I've been doing for the past two and a half years, and it's never failed me. Uh, here's, a, here's a story I like to, I like to say, cause just because it really shows to go how much reaching out can do for you. So... Cal State Fullerton is a university that plays, and especially in accounting, they place very well in four firms. They're called the big four firms, right? And I wanted to go work for a company that has never recruited from Cal State Fullerton before. Um, they only hire maybe 12 to 15 people per office, right? Um, and, and they only maybe have, you know, 10 offices in the United States. So we're talking about 120, 150 people a year go work for this company. And when there's only that limited spots, you can imagine they probably go to the best universities to fill these very small spots. Um, and it was daunting at first, you know, going to Cal State Fullerton and recognizing the value that I have in my education, the value that I see in myself, but knowing that there's just so little, that's, there's so little opportunity. There's so, so little slots, right? So how do I do this? Um, instead of trying to dwell or instead of being daunted, instead of being scared of this fact, I just started going on the computer and researching, scheduling calls. So um, for context, I have one of these positions now and it's really exciting, but I was at a, a dinner where I met um, some people that I was you know, going to work with in the future. And some of these people that went to some of these top universities and I said, hey, um, what's your story? Like, how, how did you end up landing here? What, 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 what was your interviewing process look like? And they said something that makes me laugh. It's like, I saw it on the portal and it looked really interesting. And in my head, I was like, oh, wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, I know. This job's really great. But in, in my head, I was thinking, okay, so they saw it on the portal. Let's think about what I had to do to get yeah. this interview, right? I ended up talking with someone that was an alumni yeah. that worked at one company that was able to refer me to a recruiter that worked at that company who happened to knew a recruiter that worked at my company, but in the West Coast. And then that recruiter, I met with them. And then they referred me to a recruiter 
on the East Coast. Yeah. And then that recruiter from the East Coast referred me to someone from that office that I wanted to work in. Mm -hmm. And then that person referred me back to the recruiter that was in charge of reviewing applications that year. So mm -hmm. I had to talk to, let's say, I don't know how many people that is in that That's list, like six people, yeah. right? A solid handful of people just to get an interview. Right. And that's the thing where you can do things that are previously you think that it's impossible. You think that it's not possible. If they only hire 15 students in an office, why don't they just go to Stanford if they want to get someone from California? Why don't they just go to Berkeley or UCLA where there, you know, there's higher GPA requirements or there's higher SAT score averages and things like that. So that you, oh, you can overcome that by pursuing, pursuing that uniqueness you find and you get confidence and reassurance along the way. Right. I saw this uniqueness. I saw this path that people didn't take. And I sort of just pulled on that string. And every once in a while, I would get a handshake when I pulled on that string, someone that's willing to help me. And then I keep going. Then I meet someone else, someone that keep going. Every time I meet someone, I wouldn't be able to do anything of what I do without having that team, that pe those groups of people supporting me along the way. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could do half of what I do now alone. So that's something that I really like. I, I really like that. I think when it comes into um, how I sort of like go forward for those opportunities and all that. I think that's what, that, that's my answer. You just gotta talk to as many people as possible and build that support system outside of just friends and family, but with strangers that might be able to help you get where you want to go, help you pursue that unknown. To be surprised, sometimes strangers are the most kindest people. Those are the individuals who will give you an objective answer, an objective response, whatever you're looking for, and it will be definitive. Yes or no, no or yes, and here are the people that you need to talk to. Nothing in between is they're taking you to where you're basically, I'm big on energy, where you're manifesting. And so personally, when you say that, it's true. Literally, I've been networking like crazy. And for me personally, I'm, I, I always establish this genuineness. Oh my goodness. I see people and I'm just like, I like to establish a connection. And that to me is super important because aside from the professionalism, aside from the job, the money, this and that. I like that. And that's important to me. So I project that because it's valuable to me. We talked about that. Our values. What are our values? Sweetie, if it's not, if, if it's not genuine, let me tell you, we're going the next way. Right. Um, but I say that because what you're saying is facts. Facts, Brother Salim, in, in, from what I can recollect, and I hope that is connected to what you were talking about right now, Chicago. Tell us how you're feeling. I know you're very happy to do what you're going to do, but tell us a little bit about that. About uh, so uh, Boston? Yeah. Really? I, or, did I say it backwards? I, I think you said Chicago. Oh. But no, no, I, I understand. I understand. Full okay, context, hold yeah. on. Boston, y'all. We're human. We're human. Continue. Yeah, so the, the story behind that, it, it's honestly a short one. Um, yeah. So I've been born and raised in Southern California, and um, the job that I wanted had the most opportunities in larger cities. So let's let's plan it out. That's what I did. Um, you have your larger cities in California, which is Los Angeles and San Francisco, right? For I mean, you have San Diego, but for a business, usually Los Angeles, San Francisco are hubs. Um, so I those offices are great. Los Angeles was a little too close from home. San Francisco is too expensive for me at this point in my life. Um, so I started looking at, let's see what's on the other side of the coast. You got New York City, you got Boston. I'm like, okay, great. New York City is just too chaotic for me. Yeah. Uh, in the sand. And it's also extremely expensive. Yeah. Right. Um, and Boston was great because yeah. Boston had wonderful access to um, universities in the area. It was a great crowd um, in the sense of, um, I think in a 50 mile square radius, you might have more than 35 universities and colleges. Uh, and there's every office for every top company you can think of. So just think the number of young professionals in there, in that area, sort of looking for a career and mm -hmm. developing themselves, that environment sort of stood out to me. Um, so that's one reason why, but the joke I always like to say, it's because I'm asked this question frequently during interviews for those positions at those in that area. It says, I, I want to go see the seasons. Okay. California is great, but it's sunny year round. I wanted to, I wanted to go see, see some orange on the leaves, see some snow on the ground. So that's, that's the running joke. But in, in reality, it's just because I wanted to experiment. It's a new stage of my life. Uh, it's an unknown that I saw around the corner that had yeah. potential. So I figured I have a couple years before graduate school. I don't know where I'm going to end up and I have a new job, new area. So why not explore? Four seasons, y'all. 
That was the persuasive factor. Yeah. I mean, I will say, California, it doesn't have the fourth season. No, it doesn't. And for, for good or for worse, it, yeah. it's great. Yeah. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Brother Salim. This is Alan Ruelas. We're concluding episode numero siete. And it has been an honor. It's a flex to say your name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, 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 to me, it's a privilege. I find beauty in, uh, obviously, your work, but who you are as a person. Mm. Um, like I told you that day of the panel, pushing. Voice your voice, y'all. Like, when I saw you, like I told you, off of your idea, I propelled my idea because of your initiative and your hunger, your drive. And I was just like, stuff like this is what MSI embodies. MSI literally cultivates leaders that resemble what you do. And I'm pretty sure you're a beautiful person inside and out. And for me personally, like I said, I believe in energy a lot. And I wish you the best in your endeavors. I know you're going to do big. I know you, well, even if, like we're in your personal life, I'm wishing you the best in everything. And I mean that because we establish brotherhood. And that to me is a code. And if you ever need something, I'm right here. And that establishes the seventh episode. And I'm super happy, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so the privilege is mine, Alan. And uh, about the name, it's my grandfather. So all my good fortune is due to him. So I really appreciate it. I had a blast. We got to do the, we got to do the one, two. <laughs> the one, the one, one two. two. <laughs> All right. There we go. Later, y'all. Bye. Yeah.